Hello, welcome to Evening Prayer for Friday the 18th of June. Today we remember Bernard Mizeki. Uh, he was uh, described as Apostle of the Mashona. Uh, he was converted to Christianity and served uh, in what in those days was known as Southern Rhodesia, now Zimbabwe, uh, particularly amongst the Shona tribe and until he was murdered in a, an insurrection by um, members of a rival tribe uh, in 1896. O God, make speed to save us. O Lord, make haste to help us. Psalm 38. Rebuke me not, O Lord, in your anger. Neither chasten me in your heavy displeasure. For your arrows have stuck fast in me, and your hand presses hard upon me. There is no health in my flesh because of your indignation. There is no peace in my bones because of my sin. For my iniquities have gone over my head. Their weight is a burden too heavy to bear. My wounds stink and fester because of my foolishness. I am utterly bowed down and brought very low. I go about mourning all the day long. My loins are filled with searing pain. There is no health in my flesh. I am feeble and utterly crushed. I roar aloud because of the disquiet of my heart. O oh Lord, you know all my desires, and my sighing is not hidden from you. My heart is pounding, my strength has failed me. The light of my eyes is gone from me. My friends and my companions stand apart from my affliction, and my neighbours stand afar off. Those who seek my life lay snares for me. And those who would harm me whisper evil and mutter and slander all the day long. But I am like one who is deaf and hears not, like one that is dumb who does not open his mouth. I have become like one who does not hear, and from whose mouth comes no retort. For in you, Lord, have I put my trust. You will answer me, O Lord my God. For I said, let them not triumph over me, those who exult over me when my foot slips. Truly I am on the verge of falling, and my pain is ever with me. I will confess my iniquity and be sorry for my sin. Those that are my enemies without any cause are mighty, and those who hate me wrongfully are many in number. Those who repay evil for good are against me. Because the good is what I seek. Forsake me not, O Lord. Be not far from me, O my God. Make haste to help me, O Lord of my salvation. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Judges 6.25 onwards. So we're carrying on with... Gideon and Gideon has had his encounter with the angel of the Lord who's told him he's a mighty warrior Gideon wasn't so sure but now he's got to do something about it that night the Lord said to him take your father's bull the second bull seven years old and pull down the altar of Baal that belongs to your father and cut down the sacred pole that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on top of the stronghold here in proper order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the sacred pole that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the townspeople to do it by day, he did it by night. When the townspeople arose early in the morning, the altar of Baal was broken down and the sacred pole beside it was cut down and the second bull was offered on the altar that had been built. So they said to one another, Who has done this? After searching and inquiring, they were told, Gideon, son of Joash, did it. Then the townspeople said to Joash, Bring out your son so that he may die. For he has pulled down the altar of Baal and cut the sacred pole beside it. But Joash said to all who were arrayed against him, 
Will you contend for Baal? Or will you defend his cause? Whoever contends for him shall be put to death by morning. If he is a god, let him contend for himself, because his altar has been pulled down. Therefore on that day Gideon was called Jerub Baal, that is to say, let Baal contend against him, because he had pulled down his altar. Then all the Midianites and the Melekites and the people of the east came together, and crossing the Jordan they encamped in the valley of Jezreel. But the Spirit of the Lord took possession of Gideon, and he sounded the trumpet, and the Abiezrites were called out to follow him. He sent messengers throughout all Manasseh, and they too were called out to follow him. He also sent messengers to Asher, Zebulun, and Naphtali, and they went up to meet them. Then Gideon said to God, in order to see whether you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you've said, I'm going to lay a fleece of wool on the threshing floor. If there is dew on the fleece alone, and it is dry on all the ground, then I shall know that you will deliver Israel by my hand, as you have said. And it was so. Then he rose early next morning and squeezed the fleece. He wrung enough dew from the fleece to fill a bowl of water. Then... Gideon said to God, Do not let your anger burn against me. Let me speak one more time. Let me please make trial with the fleece just once more. Let it be dry only on the fleece, and on all the ground let there be dew. And God did so that night, and it was dry on the fleece only, and on the ground there was dew. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Saviour. He has looked with favour on his lowly servant. From this day all generations will call me blessed. The Almighty has done great things for me and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm and has scattered the proud in their conceit, casting down the mighty from their thrones and lifting up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He's come to the aid of his servant Israel to remember his promise of mercy, the promise made to our ancestors, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Pray for the United Nations that they may, it may be an effective instrument of peace in the world. Lifting before the Lord the relationships between the European Union, the United Kingdom, the United States in relation to Northern Ireland and all other matters of trade negotiation. We bring before the Lord the progress towards action against climate change and the need for the G7 nations to convince the G20 nations of the advisability of the steps that need to be taken. We lift before the Lord also the World Trade Organization and the United Nations um, organizations concerning children, relief work and peacekeeping. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the leaders of nations that they may be given knowledge, wisdom and understanding in the pursuit of the good of all their peoples, so that they may live in peace within their frontiers and with other nations. And Lord, we pray that the process that we have seen in the last 18 months of democracy being pushed back will be reversed. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for peoples displaced by war, persecution or poverty, that they may be given courage and find a hope, a welcome and a future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember those who are especially on our hearts and minds this day. Heal the sick. 
bring peace to the afflicted, mend broken hearts and relationships. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. No longer will violence be heard in your land, nor ruin or destruction within your borders. For you will call your walls salvation and your gates praise. Amen. So be it, O Lord. That faith, hope and love will abound, and our lives will be known by joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness and self-control. Amen. So be it, O Lord. Then this district will bring me renown, joy, praise and honour before all nations that are on earth that hear of all the good things I do for it. And they will be in awe and will tremble at the abundant prosperity and peace I provide for it. Amen. So be it, O Lord. So thanking Lord for our creation, our preservation and all the blessings of this life. Lord, you have taught us that all our doings without love are worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts that most excellent gift of love, the true bond of peace and of all virtues, without which whoever lives is counted dead before you. Grant this for your only Son, Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May tomorrow be a bank, blank page upon which God writes what is possible and helps you to walk as he would have you walk. May you see beyond what you're facing now and be given the gift of imagination that you might look higher, reach further and see more clearly than you've ever done before. May the Lord soften the blow of negative thinking and lead you into a more positive place. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.